Hey, Brian Falzetti here, your trusted Newport Beach and Southern California real estate agent. So today we were talking about in our meeting um, about how there's a lot of people thinking that there's a possible bubbles um, going on in the real estate market and there's a lot of uh, buyers who are scared to jump in on a purchase. And I just wanted to go over a couple of the slides that they had um, and let you guys all know that there is not a bubble actually. And we are right on track about where we should have been um, prior to the market recession that we had back in 2006 to 2008. All right, so let's take a look here. So since I am a California realtor, I will be focusing more on California. However, I'll touch in on um, a couple other places in the country while I'm doing these, uh, going through these slides. So as we can see, um, last year to now, California had 8.2% appreciation um, in home prices, whereas places like Washington and Nevada saw 12 and 11%. And places like Alaska and Oklahoma saw, you know, one and a half, one, uh, one seven percent increases. Um, overall, the United States saw a six point six percent appreciation. So the country as a whole is going up. Not one place went down. And the reason why you're going to see some places like Nevada and Washington going up so significantly high is there's more interest in the markets, um, in, like in Washington. However, in Nevada, their market crashed way farther than most other places in the country. And then if we take a look at forecast for this year, California is expected to go up 9%, even more than it did last year, and whereas most of the rest of the country is going to slow down a little bit. And you see the United States as a whole has gone down to 4.3% overall appreciation. So people are in the media are probably going to go look at this huge discrepancy between the United States and California. They're going to be in a bubble. And that's not true. Like I said in the last slide, uh, our markets here on the West Coast took a way bigger hit than most of the rest of the country. So there's a lot more... Um, of a climb for us to get back to where we were pre-crash. So over the last five years you're going to see West Coast 57 for California, 54 for Oregon, 57 for Washington and Nevada. That huge crash that they had, they're at 66 percent. And whoops, in the United States as a whole 37.4. All right so the, again the whole country is climbing their way back up to that pre-crash market. So projected for this year um, to 2022, you can see that as we get more regulate, uh, you know, on a more regular appreciation, um, we're going to see less and less appreciation year by year. But overall, that's five percent, four percent, three percent, three percent, three percent. Those all add up together. So still, buying a home now, you're going to capture all that appreciation appreciation up to 2022 and um, these are projections from other people about those entire five next five years what they think the appreciation will be there's people who are way over projecting it they think 27 percent appreciation over time for the entire nation um, whereas there's other people who think it's only going to do eight three for the you know for the entire nation I don't think that's right at all I think it's going to be more around 15 maybe, um, maybe this 18 that you have here, but definitely not as low or as high as the extremes are. So if we take a look at um, a normal appreciation over time compared to what the actual market was, we're still under market appreciation um, as it would have been if we had had that normal historic appreciation and then look at how high we were when there was an actual bubble, how, what that discrepancy was, and then how low we have been. That's why you're seeing the 57% increase in California. And in Nevada, why you're seeing the 67% increase, because look at how far the crash was overall and how far there is to climb. So if we look at home appreciation from that pre-crash or from that pre-2004 um, um, normal appreciation, we're only up 2%. And then you got places like Nevada, Arizona, New Mexico, etc., that are still way under market value. Nevada's 23% under market value, and they've had a 66% increase um, 
over the past five years. So it gives you more of a realistic sense of where there might be actual bubbles, even though, again, there still is not a bubble. But you got places like Texas, 29%. They have a lot of people wanting to move there. Washington, a lot of tech, high interest. Um, North Dakota, a lot of oil, and they got um, some tech going on over there. So there are reasons why there are increases. Colorado, big luxury market right now. There's reasons for increases in all these markets, and um, there's still some markets that need to catch up. And, you know, there might be reasons why they haven't caught up. Um, people moving away, not necessarily wanting to move there. Um, the job markets aren't as they used to be. There are numerous reasons. But overall, look, United States is only an up 1% pre-crash. Only 1% increase of appreciation. So this is the most profitable time to sell a home in the past 10 years, yet people are staying more than we've ever seen. And why is that? Um, we had a lot of people who bought homes at very low uh, mortgage rates, and we have people who refinance at very low mortgage rates. Um, but so far this year, look at this increase we've had from uh, January till now. We've um, gone up a half a percent. That's a significant amount to go up in only three months. So the reason why a lot of people are staying, they bought and or refinanced down here or here. And the projected rates, you know, I talked about this um, on my video yesterday about we're going to maybe see that 5% rate again at the end of this year. The truth is these low 3% rates um, were not normal. Normal uh, mortgage rates are going to be more up here and higher. So we're just getting back to that. And people think that the rising um, mortgage rates are going to bring prices down. But that is not true either. Like I was saying in the last slide um, back here, you know, we're on that normal appreciation now. All right. When we saw those really low rates, they were here you know, trying to get people back into the market. Um, we had higher um, interest rates here even, but they were just handing out more money um, and qualifying people who necessarily shouldn't have qualified. So yeah, there's that interest rate lock that people have created for themselves that they're scared to, um, they're scared to like lose out on that three and a half percent or so that they might have got in on. But as we saw the half percent increase um, so far this year, um, just know that one percent increase, you lose about 10 percent purchasing power. So, so far this year, you've lost about five percent purchasing power than you had at the beginning of this year. Just to give you a little visual about that, the uh, average home price in Orange County is about 800. So, say you had, it wasn't even this low, this is more... Um, like November last year, but if you had purchased an eight hundred or wanted to purchase an eight hundred thousand dollar home, you're going to be at that thirty seven hundred dollars a month for your mortgage. If you want to do it today, or let's see here, yeah, if you wanted to do the same thing today, you're going to be already at thirty nine hundred. And if we go up that full percent, like we were talking about, you're at forty one hundred seventy three dollars increase. Let's say that thirty seven hundred dollars was your max. Now that puts you at your affordability at $720,000 home. So you've lost $80,000 of purchasing power just in the past few months. Or in a six month period if we're looking at November to, um, to May. And then for a more round number, million dollar home. Uh, last November you could have gotten it for uh, $4,600. Um, if this projection is right by next November, $5,200 a month for a mortgage. That's a $600, $600 a month difference. Is this necessarily a big deal to these people? Possibly, maybe not. But if you were barely able to afford that million dollars, you know, the $4,600 a month, and you go over and now you've lost $100,000 worth of purchasing power, 
So why is this all so important? All these things mixed together. If you keep waiting, if you keep holding out for that crash, if you keep holding out for possible mortgage rates to go down or the hope that increased mortgage rates will uh, bring prices down, just know that um, if they do bring prices down, which they're not projected to, it still doesn't give you as much purchasing power to begin with. So you might end up actually spending the same amount, if not more, for that lower price. But if we look at what the market's actually doing, you're seeing an increase of um, mortgage rates and an increase of home prices. So not only are you able to afford less now, that less amount isn't even going to buy you near what it would have if you had just purchased um, a couple months prior. And we're finally getting on that normal historical appreciation that we had seen prior to the bubble that we actually did have back in 2006. And we're still under that historical appreciation rate. So there's still room for the market to grow. That's why we're seeing the 5%, the 4%, 333 that we um, have been given as a prediction for the next five years. So capture that appreciation. Get in on these low um, rates while they're still here. Rates aren't going to go down anytime soon. Well, I hope you took away some valuable information from this video. Um, and moving forward, you consider this information while you are looking at homes to purchase. And if you're debating on whether now is the right time to purchase or not, I'll let you know. Now's the best time to purchase. Five months ago might have been better, but there's no time like the present. Capture that appreciation over the next five years. Get locked in on that still low rate. And if uh, rates do happen to lower in the next few years, then refi and you can get that lower rate. Feel free to subscribe for more market updates, market insights, um, local you know things to do around Orange County, LA, SoCal, and feel free to contact me today if you'd like to discuss more about what we talked about in this video or learn anything more about real estate or work with me today about buying or selling.